Hello and welcome to today's Shorts Roundtable. I'm Paul Sloop, the Short Films Programming Manager for the Cleveland International Film Festival, and I'll be hosting today's chat. Uh, before we get started, though, we want to take a moment here to offer special thanks to PNC for sponsoring our Filmmaker Conversations content throughout this year's festival. On today's roundtable, we'll be joined by filmmakers representing some of the short films included in After Hours Shorts Program One. So with that in mind, allow me to welcome our guests to today's conversation. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us uh, for today's talk. Uh, what I'd like to ask each of you to do first is introduce yourself, uh, your film, what you did on the film, and where you're calling in from today. Let's start with Chris. Yeah, hi, I'm Chris Sundberg. I directed and wrote Brothers, and I'm calling from Michigan. I'm uh, TJ Marchbank. I directed and wrote Beautiful Day, and I'm calling in from Los Angeles. Hi, I'm Auden Lincoln Vogel. I directed Zorg 2, and I'm calling in from uh, Iowa City, Iowa. Hi, I'm Asha Flowers. Um, I directed Till Death, wrote and directed Till Death, and I'm calling <coughs> Los Angeles. Hi, I'm Eduardo Viera. Um, I'm the I'm play the main character of the method uh, and co-producer and co-writer. And I'm from Carabanchel, Madrid, uh, España, Spain. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Ashley Williams. I am the writer, director, and actress of, and I produced Meets, um, and today I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah. Hi, Michael Shumway. I'm Lex Hogan. We're the writer and director of The Last Queen on Earth, and we're calling in from Salt Lake City, Utah. Well, again, we thank you all so much for taking the time to join us today. Uh, to get the conversation started, what I'd ask each of you to let us know is, Either what was the inspiration that led you to make this film, uh, how you came to make the film, or maybe how you came to be involved in the making of the film. And again, we'll start with you, Chris. Sure. Yeah, so this was uh, basically just an effort for uh, my friends and I to make a film together again. We kind of all, a lot of them I met in college or when I first moved to Los Angeles, and we had all kind of gone off and started our own careers in different aspects of the film industry and wanted to come back together and make something of our own again. So we were trying to come up with something shootable and affordable and kind of ran through a few different ideas. And I came up with this concept that was uh, at the time actually kind of inspired by Game of Thrones. It was kind of at the height of that show's popularity. And I was really fascinated by sort of the brutality in which they treated their characters. It just felt like anything could happen to any of them at any time, at least up until the last season. But uh, uh, yeah, so I wanted to try something like that, and uh, I've also always been a fan of sci-fi, so that's kind of where I went with it, and uh, exploring AI and technology, like uh, films like Ex Machina and Alex, Gar Alex Garland's Devs, uh, The Matrix in 2001, so that was kind of where this stemmed from, and it was a lot of fun for us to make. Great. Thank you, Chris. Thanks. Mm -hmm. TJ? Uh, yeah, I guess for Beautiful Day, the... I really just wanted to make a scary movie in the daytime uh, was where that really started. Uh, and then as I went on I and sat down and started writing, I thought it was an interesting idea to have these characters make it shootable where we don't actually ever have to build a creature or use effects to make a creature. So we don't really ever see it. Um, and that became the concept of our main ladies just trying to get to their car a hundred feet away and something's hidden in the grass and they just can't get there. And so that's really what the inspiration was. And I sat down and I wrote it in an afternoon and had a reading of it like two days later and went through about four different drafts. And then we shot it uh, in uh, like that, that fall later that fall while my wife was seven months pregnant. So that was also very fun. Uh, but yeah, so that was, that's kind of where, where that started. Great. Thank you, TJ. Odd. Um, yeah, I guess I was, I was working on pre-production for a much more sort of somber and serious movie. And I was just a very sort of belabored kind of, uh, pre-production. I got so sick of it that I decided I wanted to do something that was just very out there and fun. 
And also I find animation to be, I mean, most people do, I think exceedingly boring uh, a lot of the time. So I wanted to, you know, figure out how I could mash as many different styles and different uh, media together. And so I really kind of grew out of that idea of like trying to do something with collage, but also pen and ink um, and also some 3D. So yeah, I was really trying to find a way that I could make the animation process as interesting and exciting for me throughout. Um, well, it ended up making it interesting for a lot of other people as well. So thank you. That's great. <laughs> Asia. Um, oh, Asha. I, I, I was inspired to write this film because I wanted a directing sample and I wanted a comedy sample. I'm a dramatic writer typically. And I, at the time I was working on a animated comedic show um, and a, an adult, more adult show. And I wanted to, it was my first job in television as a PA and I thought it would be, I thought that I would get my first writing job by uh, showing that I could write comedy and slipping it to one of the writers and then I would be on staff. Like they could see that, you know, uh, I was, I'm obviously a comedy writer. And so that was the whole point of, of this short when I wrote it. Um, and, and then also I love crime drama and I love uh, comedy. So I wanted to do something that was mixed genre. Yeah, so that was my inspiration. <laughs> it's a great script. It's a, it, it's a fun ride. So nice work. Thank you. Eduardo. Hi, uh, sorry, uh, speaking Spanish better. Um, and she's translate. Um, sobre todo, lo que queríamos es crear un poco la, la duda sobre algunos um, métodos de, que se usan en las escuelas de interpretación y también eh, ver hasta dónde llegaría la gente por sentirse integrada en, en un grupo y, y con esa ambición ¿no? desmesurada. Eh, ok, we wanted to see um, how the methods of the acting academies or schools affect the students because some of them are uh, quite fragile and they they wanted to prove um, to which point they they can bear those methods they can stand it quite a captivating conclusion to the film so a, a very effective use of that storyline so ashley um so uh well this short is about a pregnant vegan woman who starts craving meat in her pregnancy and uh i've you know i've sort of been it all i've been vegan i've been you know i've done all all meat you know eating regimes i've experimented a lot with the ethics of meat eating and i've always been really interested in it and uh, i've read a lot from jonathan Safran foer to michael pollan etc and i read this um book called Killing It about a female butcher. And I just really wanted to write something that was sort of inspired by that. Um, so that's how it came about. It, again, so great. It's a film that stopped me in my tracks when I saw it the first time. And I was like, oh yeah, we've got to play this. No, this, it's, is, this is too good. It's pretty, yeah, there should be a trigger <laughs> warning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. Michael and Lex. Yeah, our, uh, the last point on Earth kind of started with us asking the question, uh, just a what if, um, and every part of it, we wanted it to be something unexpected. So, you know, what if we take a standard apocalyptic movie and, and put a, a guy in drag who's trying to discover his feminine side? Um, so everything from the set design to the music to the uh, the character development, we really wanted it to be um, something that would surprise and delight. And it did, I assure you. Programmers <laughs> spent much time talking about how, oh, we have to play this. I don't know where we're playing it, but we're going to play it somewhere. <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, I'd like to follow up with that with all of you and ask you to share. You know, we're in person. It's always great to share with the audience, and we want to do the same here. Just the one thing you'd like people to know about your film. It could be a backstory, something happened in the making of the film, some cosmic string story that allowed the film to be made, whatever it is you think would be the, the most interesting thing you'd like the audience to know about the film that they wouldn't know just by having watched the film. And again, we will start with Chris. I guess one thing that I find interesting is that we, uh, I moved to Chicago right after we shot the film and it was pre-pandemic. I was living in Los Angeles before that. 
and my editor stayed in LA. So we were actually editing the film remotely through screen sharing and phone calls and stuff, which seems kind of commonplace now after a year of Zoom calls and everything. But it was interesting doing all that before people were sort of forced to. Yes, it is something that has become, the whole world has changed, no doubt about it. So mm -hmm. great, thanks, Chris. TJ? Mm -hmm. um, one little fun tidbit, I guess, about the making of the film. We shot at this place in Simi Valley, California, called Big Sky Movie Ranch, um, which is a beautiful location, mm -hmm. and a lot of things have, have shot there. And if you've been up there, you'll see the locations in different movies. It's really fun. But when we were up there, it was the day one of shooting. Our location um, manager kind of came up to me who was like, there, just look over everything. And he said, you you know, you normally hire a rattlesnake, a rattlesnake rat, like Wrangler for these kind of shoots. And I said, what? And he's like, oh yeah, the tall dead grass at this time of year, that's where they're living. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, we don't have one of those. No one told me about that. And he was like, oh, it's fine. Just when you walk through, just stomp really loud. They'll go away. So the whole time, while we're shooting and like, if you watch the movie, my ladies are in the grass a hundred percent of the movie. So um, there were just like cutting and I'm just like telling everybody just stomp loudly into the grass. Or like if my crew's walking across the grass, I'm like, stomp, just stomp. <laughs> so we don't, nobody gets bit. And, um, and then like after each take two with the ladies in the grass, we stood up and we had multiple people checking everybody for ticks like to make sure nobody got ticks while we were in the grass. And that was probably the moment where I was like, I probably shouldn't have wrote a movie that takes place in really tall dead grass. That's, yeah. that's probably on me. So that was a fun, that was fun. That sounds like another short film itself waiting yeah. to happen right there, right there. <laughs> Thank you, TJ. On. Uh, the nice thing about animation is you don't have to deal with the real world at all. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess um, I didn't have any intention of making this movie that when I, I was I was going on an airplane ride and then the original storyboard was I wrote on a like a airplane like a barf bag um because I was just bored on an airplane and then yeah it was just funny because I had no intention of making this movie when I got on the plane but by the time I got off I had the storyboard for the film which was basically unchanged uh until like whatever two years later when I finished production wow that was next time, I guess there you go thank you on Asha. Asha. <laughs> oh, I'm never going to get this right. We're going to spend time afterwards just doing your name, you and I, okay? My apologies. No, it's okay. Um, I'd, what, um, I couldn't really think of a funny story, but I think yeah, it's really interesting. I love that the film was originally for animation um, because I was trying to shoot a film for little to no money. And I had some people on my show who were who were wanting to be involved and who were willing to, um, so I had a couple artists who helped me with characters and drawings and stuff. And so I was wanting to go the animation route, but then I realized that I was not going to be able to do it for little to no money. Um, and so I was like, okay, we're gonna put this on hold. And then when I came back to it, I was like, okay, it's still expensive, more expensive. So we're gonna do live action. We're just gonna do live action. And so that's how it came to be what it is. Yeah. Great. It's such a good film. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing it. Eduardo. Um, the punch or kicks, golpes. Los, lo, o sea, una anécdota graciosa, los golpes que sufrimos Estela Cebo y yo. Ah. Por, eh, de parte yes. de Fernando Cayo, <laughs> un grandísimo compañero de actor, pero... Both main characters suffered several... They were punched by the... <laughs> by one of the... By one of the actors, they were real punched. Sí. Ah, yes. Y el, el hecho de... Bueno, todo el proceso de trabajo con Néstor Ruiz Medina, el director y coproductor y, y co guionista junto con Juanma de Vega, eh, de dos meses de ensayo, eh, fueron muy intensos, muy bonitos y en los que me, me hizo perder 12 kilos de peso para, para el papel. Sí, yeah, he, he had to lose um, 12 oh, kilograms, I don't know, in pounds, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he had to lose a lot of weight for the role. So, um, in the two previous months to shoot, um, he practically, he um, Um, how do you say? He starved. <laughs> yes. 
So physically demanding shoot yes. in many ways between getting punched and having to lose yes. a, a significant portion of himself just to yeah. get there. Right. He thinks he's Christian Bale. So um, <laughs> I didn't understand you, but <laughs> thank you, Eduardo. No. Ashley. Uh well we in the in the short film we um we carve up a a lamb, an actual lamb, um, like a 200 pound lamb and uh, butcher it. And I, I interned at a butcher shop so that I could understand exactly um, how to do it properly um, and all of that. But one of the things that was really important to me was that we actually ate the lamb afterwards to really honor the life and responsibly, you know, process that whole experience and uh you can't eat a 200 pound lamb in one day so we had the whole frozen lamb in our freezer and it took us like six months to eat it um and we did eat it all but um the head <laughs> of the lamb we were confused about how to eat it and i had some recipes but i was dreading it and so consequently my kids would always go into the freezer and just pull it out and <laughs> play with it and they would have friends over and be like, do you want to see the, the lamb's head? <laughs> okay. We would come into the kitchen and my three-year-old would just be playing with the, the lamb's head. So um, finally we, we cooked it and none of us could eat it, but we did really appreciate it. <laughs> it all I can tell you is in my childhood, like we'd be the ones going, they got the coolest parents. Why don't we have a lamb's head in all? I, how's that not possible? They're cool my, parents. Yeah, my five-year-old was like, my parents are filmmakers. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's stuff in our freezer. <laughs> That's great stuff. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. Michael and Lex. Um, we had a lot of funny things happen, um, but one thing I thought was really humorous from my perspective was that our actor, Travis Ferris, he um, he practiced uh, walking and running in the heels so much that he got way too good at it. And he ended up having to pretend to be worse at it. So all those shots of him running across a muddy field, like as soon as we called cut, it was like he would just stop stumbling and just be upright in yeah, the just, sinking mud. Just fabulous. Like, I don't even know how he got that good, but. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, I can't thank you all enough, not only for sharing your stories and insights on the films, but for sharing your films. It's such a great collection of short films here in After Our Shorts Program One. So on behalf of everyone at CIFF, allow me to thank you all so much for joining us for today's roundtable. We also want to thank you, our audience, for joining us for today's Shorts Roundtable. Without your ongoing support, we wouldn't be here with you to bring film home. We hope you'll consider supporting our challenge match again this year, presented by Cuyahoga Arts and Culture, to support the future of our festival. Our goal this year is to reach $145,000, and we thank you in advance for any contribution you're able to make. To make a donation or to purchase tickets or to check out our full schedule of filmmaker conversations, please visit our website at clevelandfilm.org. With that, please stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll look forward to seeing you again here very soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. And sal saludos de Néstor Ruiz, el director, y de Estela Cebo, que yes. me han dejado un mensaje que no he podido emitir. <laughs> yes, greeting from, from the director and the other actress. We're sorry they can't be here. <laughs> We're sorry for not nice. having you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay.